What's going on guys? Sin for the win here and can you feel it? Can you feel it? That's that's playoff hockey knocking on the door. I cannot wait for this year's Stanley Cup playoffs. It is it's going to be incredible. We got some new teams breaking in. Uh the, you know, they haven't been there in a while. Also, of course, the newest team in the NHL, the Vegas Golden Knights coming out of the gates like gangbusters and surprising everyone around the league. I don't think anyone expected them to make the playoffs, much less win the division. It's incredible what they've been uh, uh, able to do here in just their first year of hockey. But, I mean, there's a chance for a three-peat. There's a chance for, you know, teams to get their first cut. It's just... There, there's a lot of good stuff going on. So what we're going to do here, I'm just going to focus on round one. I'm not going to give you my entire predictions or anything like that. I'm definitely not telling you guys my bracket. I don't tell anyone my bracket. It's a superstition. It's a disease. Don't question my stuff. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start in the Western Conference. First matchup, round one, Golden Knights against the Kings. Now, this is an interesting one. Almost a clash of cultures. You have the Kings, you know, the big kind of gritty, four-checking possession of the puck style play. Then you have the Golden Knights, you know, the fast fast team. Transition game is strong and uh, very more built in the direction that the NHL is going, which is, you know, the speed skill game and... Sort of like they are, they are the island of misfits toys, you know, all these, all these players who, you know, their teams kind of get, I wouldn't, I won't say gave up on them, but yeah, you know, you have to make sacrifices and, you know, they weren't the teams that, you know, thought they weren't worthy of being protected. And now look at them, William Carlson, 40 plus goal score. What? <laughs> Malcolm Subban even picked up on waivers and he's having the kind of putting up the kind of numbers he is. It's it's going to be a hell of a matchup and I'm excited about it. Um although Edge it's going to be tough. I I want the Kings to win just because if the Sharks get out of the first round, like they can beat the Kings a lot easier than they can beat Vegas, but I got I got to say I got to think Vegas maybe has the edge. Now, on the only the way that the Kings can win is you have to make you have to take the golden knights off their game. You cannot let them play their game. If you let them transition, if you let them skate in circles around you, they're going to destroy you. But if you if you're the kings, if you're able to possess that puck, slow it down, play your game, get in their end, keep the puck in their end, you're going to you're going to wear them down. That their defensive core is not good enough to main to withstand constant pressure. Now, that's not to say that the Knights' defensive core isn't good, but that is probably their weakest point. If I had to think about a weak point on the Golden Knights, it's it's that defensive core. Um, they're good, but they're they're far from great. They have great goaltending. However, is Flurry going to be able to keep it up the entire time? We've seen in the past, he's been sort of inconsistent in the playoffs. I mean, just think back to him and Murray. The past two times they won the Cup, they were a lot of switching off between the two of them. So, big question mark. Is Flurry going to be good? However... If he's not, Malcolm Subban has done incredible, so... And even if you think back to the beginning of the year when the Golden Knights were on, like, their fifth string goalie, they're still putting up wins. So, at the same time, maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe this team is just magic incarnate and has the chance to just go all the way, which a lot of people are thinking they could go all the way. I'm not too I'm not too sure if I'm willing to hop on that bandwagon yet. I think they're very unproven when it comes to postseason hockey, but we're going to find out this year. And it's uh, it's going to be exciting. So next in the West, I'm sticking with the Pacific, is my team, the Sharks against the Ducks. And I couldn't ask for a better matchup, man. They haven't faced each other in the postseason since 09. We all know what happened then. Sharks got crushed. However, that was almost, you know, it's almost 10 years ago at this point. Both teams are different, but they're still, they still kind of play their same style. Both of these teams, very gritty, very work hard and good things happen you know they both they both kind of have transition games when they need to but they're both kind of the four checking offensive zone pressure type teams and that's what I love to watch and this matchup is going to be incredible my only my only lament about this series is that Jumbo is injured and we don't get to see a rematch of the beginning of the game fight between Getzloff and Thornton that was one of the most epic fights in Stanley Cup playoff history Opening draw, Thornton against Getzloff, the two captains. At, uh, I actually don't know if Jumbo was captain at the time. I think he was, but they both dropped the gloves. Oh, it was incredible. Sorry. Forgive me for reminiscing. Let's let's talk about the actual series here. Now, both teams have been dealing with injuries. Cam Fowler's out. Jumbo's out. Uh, Gibson's just coming back. And before you know his, he got shaken up, he was uh, playing some of the best goaltending 
uh, of his entire season. I think he was, what, second in goals against total or maybe even first? It was impressive, the the numbers that Gibby was putting up, and that's going to be a hurdle that the Sharks have got to get over. With the addition of Kane, they now have a lot more scoring. I mean, if if they didn't have Kane, I wouldn't give the Sharks a prayer in this this series. But um, I'd say Sharks could win. They'd have to win in six, though. Um, Actually, no, they they, they could do six or seven. You know, Ducks are never that good on Game 7 on home ice. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. But, yeah, uh, Ducks, they they need to figure out a way to get solid defense without Cam Fowler. Now, they have it kind of in that Manson pairing. I forget who he's with. I'm terrible. Manson Lindholm, I want to say. Anyway, sorry. I should know more about this. But uh, they, they have, like, one really, really good shutdown pair. Kind of like the Sharks do in, in Vlasic and Braun. But what the Sharks need to do is to to single them out and put pressure on them. I don't think they're at that, that combination is as proven as Vlasic and Braun is at shutting down some of the best. And now that, you know, the Sharks have more offensive threat, and especially a guy like Evander Kane, I think he's going to bring a whole other element of playoff hockey that the Sharks have really needed the past few years. He's got speed, but he's also got the grit. And he's like, he's basically, in my opinion, the kind of the, uh, uh, the equivalent almost of like a five tool guy in baseball, uh, Vander Kane, because he brings a little bit of everything to the table. And I love that about him and I can't wait to see him perform. But yeah, prediction wise, obviously people are going to say I'm biased, but I really think the Sharks can, can beat these guys. And I think they're, but it's going to be in six or seven. If, if they do, I think either, either way, I think the series is easily going to six or seven. It's, it's such an even matchup across the board. And it's going to be one of my favorite series to watch because it has the style of hockey. I love to watch and you know, it's two teams that are very evenly matched and the Sharks have had the edge against them uh, in this season, so I do like that, but this is the playoffs. Anything can happen, and uh, should be a great matchup. Now moving on to the Central Division, the first matchup between the Predators and the Avalanche. Now, it's kind of ironic. The Predators are now seeing the Avalanche be in the same position that they were, you know, the last dog to the bowl. They know the grit that Avalanche is going to come with, the desperation, the, uh, the kind of rebellious attitude, the same kind of attitude the Golden Knights had this year, like, you know, us against the world, and that's how Avalanche feel. Coming into the playoffs, winning their last game of the season, like, that's how they get into the playoffs. They've got to be feeling the flow. They have to be feeling that energy. The Nashville Predators cannot come out flat. If they come out flat and they give the Avalanche a breath of life, they're in trouble. Um, but you have Pekka Rene back there, and oftentimes Pekka Rene is enough. So predictions for this one, I think it's going to be, I don't know, man. It's I, I think Nashville's going to win, and I think they're going to win in five. However, if what I said about Avalanche and, um, happens and they come out and take the Nashville by surprise, they not only have a chance to win the series, but they have a actually a big chance to pull off an upset themselves. I, I honestly think this is could be a really interesting series because it depends on it depends on a lot. Like what's up with like is Avalanche goaltending gonna come through? Is their defense gonna be able to really help them out? I know we know they can produce offense. We know they're quick. We know they we know they have good skill. They got Nathan McKinnon who hasn't but you know they're inexperienced. So it they're they're Obviously, pun intended, they're a wild card here. Um, <laughs> and not not just in name, but actually how how we think they're actually going to do in the playoffs. So I'm definitely going to I'm definitely giving it to Nashville, probably in five, maybe six. But Avalanche has the chance to surprise anyone, and I would love them to surprise us all. I would love to see Nashville eliminated, get the President's Trophy curse, continue that thing going on. Okay, so next one in the Central Division: Jets against Minnesota. Now this is the one that I'm not too sure what the hell is going to happen because again, it's like, yeah, Jets had a great season. Is Hellebuck going to be great though? Is he going to be able to continue what he did at certain times during the season? Cause he's unproven. That's, that's the bottom line. Hellebuck is unproven. And especially in the postseason, Winnipeg in the postseason has a horrible track record, horrible track record. And their team is still relatively young with not a lot of experience under the belt. Having Bufflin on the back end helps a lot. You know, he's won, he's won a cup, um, albeit, you know, a while ago and playing as a forward for the most part. However, cup experience is cup experience. He knows what it takes. He's going to have to school the younger guys on his team. 
uh, about what it takes. Now, on the flip side, Minnesota, again, kind of a team with not the greatest playoff track record. Both these teams have something to prove, and that's why it's hard for me to call. Um, Dubinick, I think he could, he has a chance to just dominate, and I think he's um, experienced and old enough to do so without kind of being uh, shaken, you know, kind of shaken by, you know, the pressure or anything like that. Um, you know, Eric Stahl has, he's won a cup again, 10 years ago, but he has the cup experience. You got guys like Ryan Suter, uh, Parise. These are guys that you look to in the playoffs for the leadership. And, um, you know, Winnipeg has that, but I don't think they have it as to the extent that Minnesota has it. But again, the playoff track record is still a question mark. And which is why in this series, this is probably the hardest one for me to call. Um, this Jets and Wild series because both teams can choke and both teams can can surprise us. I would I would love I would love to see the Jets. I would love to see Line A and you know, all the young guys get in, but I really think Minnesota has a big chance to pull off an upset. I think they have they uh, they have this fire to them this year and they they're they're able to come back in games. And like I said, if Hellebuck isn't up to the task, and we all know Winnipeg can score. But can they keep that puck out of the net is the big question because because Minnesota has a lot of stick to itiveness and they they will they can come back and I mean you know you think about the Sharks which are supposed you know supposedly one of the better defensive teams you know Minnesota had several times when they were you know able to come back against the Sharks and stuff like that and uh, other times this year I can remember a few times that Minnesota was able to come from behind and and get big points or big wins and stuff like that so. Like I said, very, very hard to call, and I'm not even sure what to predict on that. Like, I, I, I want to see a seven game series out of these two teams. I think it could happen because, hell, I mean, they've seemed really evenly matched, and they kind of where the where the other one lacks something, the the other team has that something. You know, maybe Minnesota lacks the 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 you know just impressive, crazy, uh, open ended offense. But on the flip side, I think their their blue line is a bit more solid and their goaltending is a bit more solid. And, you know, Winnipeg definitely better offensively, perhaps defense and goaltending maybe a bit weaker. So it's going to be exciting, but I don't know. I want, all I know is I, I would love to see a seven game series out of these two guys because damn, I, I don't know how to call it. And that's where it's at. And that's not even from lack of information. It's like, I just, I don't know. They, I don't see them in the, you know, their playoffs there's not enough information of recent with these teams. So it's, it's kind of wild card. So I'm, it's going to be great. It's going to be great to see those teams go at it. All right. So now moving on to the East and this is where things get quite interesting. I'll start with, um, yeah, the number one, we'll go with the lightning against the devils. Now this one seems pretty cut and dry. You think the lightning are going to crush the devils. However, again, don't be too hasty. The devils are hungry. Taylor hall is hungry. And, um, First taste of playoff action, though. That's that's the downside. However, again, kind of like the Avalanche, they they sort of are coming in with that mentality of the you know the underdog mentality. They don't they don't have pressure on them. They're they're expected to lose, so they can they can cast that aside and just say whatever. Let's let's prove the world wrong, and that's an excellent mentality to go into the postseason with. That's the perfect mentality you want to go. In. You want to have that edge in the postseason, and the Lightning are a team where they've had a lot of trouble staying healthy. If Stamkos gets injured, what's happening? I mean, just just look at where the end of the season went. Lightning came out of the gates at the beginning of the season. They were, you, I thought they were winning the Presidents. They were, they were incredible. Then towards the end, Kucherov started to really slow down offensively. You know, maybe they started dealing with some other lingering injuries. But yeah, if if they start, if they take any major injuries, they they're in a lot of trouble. They are in a lot of trouble against this Devils team. Um. But that being said, I, I still I'm still giving it to the Lightning. I think even if the Devil, I I, I just don't know Devil's goaltending like Corey, like Schneider. Yeah, yeah, he's good. He's but I don't know, man. I don't I don't I don't think they have enough. They did you know picking up, um, Vatten. Jesus, I almost forgot his name. Picking up Sammy Vatten and shipping off Henrik was great for their blue line. You know it helps them out, gives them a lot more versatility. Uh, but again. A lot of a lot of youth on that team and not a lot of experience. Um, they have some of it, but the their experienced guys are more or less on the bottom side of their roster for the most part. Um, don't get me wrong, role players with playoff experience are invaluable in the playoffs. However, 
will they be able to get the job done? But you look back at last year and, you know, I had the same questions about Edmonton and despite the Sharks going, you know, suffering with a bunch of lingering injuries, the Edmonton Oilers were still still kick their ass and you know maybe that's an advantage at the same time going into the playoffs without the experience experience you know you don't know what to expect all you do is go out there and, and play hard you don't have any anything else in your mind you know messing with you like no past experiences none none of that it's it's a fresh fresh start basically so I'm still think I'm still saying lightning in five or six but devils might have something to show us and uh, it's going to be interesting to see all right so next one we're going to talk about the Capitals against the Blue Jackets. Now, this this series depends, well, I'll say it depends on one thing to start off. Sergei Bobrovsky. Are we going to see the classic Bobrovsky meltdown, or are we going to see regular season Bobrovsky play in the playoffs? Because if we see regular season Bobrovsky playing in the playoffs, this series is going deep, and I don't know how to call it. But if we see Bobrovsky of recent playoff memory, this series is over in a hurry, and Capitals are getting to that second round so that they can get eliminated very quickly. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, you got to throw that in there. It's the Capitals, all right? We dealt with it as Sharks fans for the longest time, always the first and second round exit jokes. We finally made it, and we choked. But hey, no more second round exits. <laughs> all right, so yeah, let's break it down a bit. Blue Jackets, they, um, they've... They had a great end of the season. They 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 made some magic getting back into those playoffs. I didn't think they were going to do it, you know, but they they were one of those teams that just kept working at it and they uh they had some magic happen. You got to be you, you got to watch out for these guys. They got a young blue line, but their blue line is skilled. And they're they're big guys. They're big boys too. Warensky, Seth Jones, these guys are no pushovers. They're not only can they create offense, but they're big bodies to try to move. You, if you're trying to have a net front presence against these guys, that's it seems like a pretty tough thing, and on their front end, they they do have some decent amount of speed, but I do think that Columbus could use a bit more speed, especially if they want to beat a team like the Capitals, who are kind of in the same boat, where the Capitals do have speed, but I don't consider them a speed team, you know what I mean? Like, I don't consider them a four-check team either. Again, they're on the Eastern Conference, I don't get a chance to watch them as much, but they, they seem not so much like a possession-style play, but... Definitely not a purely transitional team. You know, they they kind of they're a team that will expose your weaknesses and strike on them. You know, if you if you leave, they'll they'll make you pay for your mistakes. If you leave Ovechkin open, he's he's gonna make you pay. If you know if you if you allow Kuznetsov to skate circles around you, he's gonna make you pay. You know, they they've got these guys who can make you pay. And Columbus, like I said. Can they can they counter that? Can they shut down that? Can they shut that down? Can Bobrovsky make the big saves when he needs to? And that that's I really think that that this series comes down to Bobrovsky, and that seems so simplified, but it really does, man. You've we've seen Bobrovsky in the past. He's had trouble in the postseason. He hasn't had this amazing thing. Now maybe with the Jackets, their better defensive core this year can help him out. But I, like I said, I really think it comes down to that. And I'll, I'll sound like a broken record if I keep talking about this. So we're going to move on. All right. So the next one, I'm going to save one of my, the best one for, or at least what I think might be the best one for last. Um, so we're going to talk about the Bruins and the Maple Leafs now. This one is crazy because I think I, I when I, on paper, the Bruins are going to crush them. But then you look at the regular season statistics, it seemed like the Maple Leafs had their number throughout the regular season. You know, they kind of had figured out ways to beat the Bruins when a lot of other teams couldn't flip side though. We got to remember Bruins were playing with like a half AHL roster for most of this year. And they still almost won the Atlantic number one. How the fuck? And number two, that is impressive. All right. So you cannot sleep on the Bruins. You can't. And I hate, I don't hate the Bruins. I respect the Bruins. I hate Brad Marchand. <laughs> I can't say I respect him. I might like him on my team, but damn, Damn, you're so talented. Why are you such a dick? <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so what the Leafs did, they did pick up some more experience, but their defense is still trash. Now, F Freddie Anderson can make some crazy saves. We saw it last year against the Capitals, and they, they, they took the Capitals to town, but the Bruins are a different beast than the Capitalists. Cap did I say Capitalists? <laughs> we got the socialists versus the capitalists here evidently um yeah so the bruins are a different beast than the capitals they 
I'm worried. I'm scared for the Leafs only because all that young talent out there, all these, you know, young, speedy, skilled guys, you better hope you can dodge those hits, man. You got Zdeno Char who's going to throw throw his body. Charlie McAvoy throws his body around. You got McQuaid back there. Kevin Miller. All these, you know, big body guys. And those are just defensemen. You're not even, you're not even looking at the forward end of things yet. Ha. Huh. It's, it's scary. It's the Bruins are scary. And if you think they're not, you are, you, I'm sorry, you're disrespecting them. If you don't think that they're scary, this is a, this is a scary team. Definitely. Uh, cause they play that insanely gritty. We're going to blue collar. Like the, they are the most blue, blue collar team in the Stanley cup playoffs. No question. They are the most blue collar team. And that's, that's been their identity. And that's what won them the cup in 2011. And yeah. <sighs> Yeah, the Maple Leafs had their number in the in the in the regular season, but again, regular season is one thing. This is playoff hockey. There's going to be less calls. There's going to be a lot more body contact, and the Leafs have to figure out how to play that style of hockey and how to how to stand up for themselves and how and how to match the Bruins' intensity because they can't they can't skate around doing cutesy shit. That's not going to fly against a team like the Bruins. So you got guys like you know Marlow. And uh, some other guys that are, you know, they brought in for maybe a bit of playoff experience. Marlowe's clutch as fuck, so you're, he's. I'm, I'm. We're gonna see. We're gonna see Marlowe on the first line at some point. I'm, an, I'm guaranteeing that he's gonna be on the first line at some point. And Mar, I, I don't know if he's played there much this season. I haven't been able to watch them much. I've watched highlights, but uh, he's he should be put on that first line at some point because they are gonna need that. Um, but again, the Leafs and the big question mark is Leafs defense. Are they ready? I don't know. You got Roman Polak. All right. I know Roman Polak playoff. I I saw him on my team and it was, it was painful. It's really painful. Costly turnovers and the Bruins are a team that's going to forecheck you to death. And if you, if you're going to, if you're going to pressure Polak and once he makes turnovers, they're going to be bad turnovers. They're going to be right in front of your goalie. So Freddie Anderson is going to need to bail the team out. If, if the Leafs want a chance at winning this series, you're going to have to rely on Freddie Anderson because I'm sorry, Leafs defense is not ready. They're not ready for big time yet. And against the Bruins, you have your work cut out for you, Leafs. I would love to see the Leafs win. Don't get me wrong. I want to see Marlowe. I want to see Marlowe get a goddamn cup. I don't care what jersey it's in. Get him a goddamn cup. The man deserves it. He is... Ugh. Sorry. I'm going to cry. <laughs> but yeah, so prediction for this one. Man, I'm going to say... I'm going to say... I'm going to have to say six games to the Bruins. Maybe five. But if the Leafs... If the Leafs... I hope the Leafs surprise me. That's all I'm going to say. I hope they surprise me. But yeah, the Bruins, uh, they're, they're scary, man. I'm, I'm sorry. They're, they're, they're pretty scary. All right. So last but not least, which is, I think is going to be the best one because it's such a bitter rivalry rivalry. And it's one team being back in the, in the playoffs after, you know, being absent from them for the past few years and the defending Stanley cup, two time Stanley cup champions in the Pittsburgh Penguins, a Pennsylvania matchup, mat- matchup, Jesus can't even talk i'm so excited about this pittsburgh and philly whoo this is going to be exciting there are going to be sparks i don't even i don't even i want i want the flyers to win but i don't think it's going to happen I, I want the pens eliminated but i don't think they got a, i don't think they have a chance man it's the penguins are just are just way too skilled and just have way too much experience under their belt and philly is not a disciplined team and Pittsburgh makes you pay for not being a disciplined team. And again, they the, the Pittsburgh is almost I hate to say it, but I you got to respect them. Um, you know, they 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 beat my team in the Stanley Cup in 2016 and and then it should have been a sweep. The only reason the Sharks were close was because of Martin Jones. <laughs> that was it. That's the only reason that series was close was because of Martin Jones. So, and that, and that's the thing about Philly. Who's their goaltender? Who is going in net for you? Elliot? Okay. Elliot got thrashed by the Sharks in 2016 on the Blues team, which had better defense than the Flyers, in my opinion. But I'm, I don't think I'm alone on that. I don't think Flyers defense is as good as the Blues was in 2016. And again, that's a judgment call. And um, But yeah, that's the big question mark for Philly. Who's your, who's your goaltender? I mean, both of them are good when they want to be. Mrazek can be good. Elliot can be good. But are they going to be? Are they going to be good? 
you, I don't know. I don't, you know, you got, but what I do like about the Philly team is they got, they got guys who I consider playoff guys, you know, guys like Wayne Simmons. I consider him, you know, a big playoff guy. Voracek as well. Giroux is kind of like the consummate professional leader. So he speaks for himself, but Voracek is kind of like the, the speedy skill guy. And he, he seems to me like a guy who's always skating. And that's what you want to see. You want to see you guys always skating. And Voracek is always skating. Um, and of course you can't forget about the Wayne train, Wayne Simmons. He is just the epitome of power forward. And not only that, he's exceptionally skilled and he's made me drop my jaw in a few times where I think it was this. Yeah. I think pretty sure it was this year where he just dangled Brent Burns, just this, this sexy inside out move. It just made Brent Burns look like a statue. And then Dell robbed him, but I was, it just blew me away. I'm just, like, here's this power forward dude, this tough, gritty, physical presence and he's dangling people granted it's brent burns but he's dangling people (laughs) so that's the strength of philly but then you look at the penguins strength and it's like yeah they got that same thing but they have it on two maybe three lines and then they have weaker defensive core than last year and their big question mark is Matt Murray. Now, people are going to call me crazy, but you know how I feel about Matt Murray. I don't think he's elite. Yes, he has two cups under his belt, but he split time with Flurry. And in those two years where he won the cup, Penguins defense, especially on their forward end, was absolutely insane. I mean, you had Nick Bonino blocking 13 shots a game. You know what I mean? So first round, though, I'm pretty sure Matt Murray is going to come out strong. It just as it continues, as we get down to the dog days, that's where I think he might run into the problems. And then the Penguins have the pro- have the issue of like they don't have a flurry to fall back on, or you know when flurry was shit in the bed, they had a Murray to fall back on. That was one of the Pens' strength in the past was that when one of their goalies shot the bed, they threw in the other one, and he took over and played outstanding. That being said, um, in 2016 they had freaking Zatkoff in net, and they were still finding ways to win games. So. I don't think the Penguins are as good as they are in 2016, but they're still the Penguins. They're still Sidney Crosby. They're still Evgeny Malkin. And God damn, like, it's just not fair, like, how much skill that the Pens have. And I think think they're going to beat the Flyers, but with how gritty the Flyers are, there could be some injuries probably to both sides. So I think it it, it could be a long, longer series. It could be a longer series. Um, if, If both teams stay healthy... I'd say Penguins could probably win in five. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I just, I just, I don't trust the Flyers' goaltending. Plain and simple. You, you, and against a team like the Penguins, if you don't have good goaltending, you're done. You're done. They're too fast. They're too skilled. They're too, they're too everything. And they're, they, they can walk all over you. But this is just an amazing rivalry matchup, and to have these two teams with such a rich history between them and a lot of, I guess you could say, bloodshed in their history, it's gonna be crazy. So. If the Flyers can impose their will, they can win this series in six, in six or seven. But winning that game seven on uh, on away ice in Pittsburgh would be very tough. And and if if the Penguins, you know, can play their game, and if the Flyers' goaltending is incredibly suspect, they're they're winning in five or six. So those are those are my first round predictions. Now. Some of them might seem a little crazy. Some of them may seem a bit more safe, but I tried to give both perspectives, you know, both teams, what 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 it would take to, for them to win. Like it's, I guess this is less of a, predi- well, it is predictions, but it's less of a uh, sort of bracket prediction and more of like a uh, sort of breakdown of it. So let the comments fly. I want to hear all, all your guys' you know, feedback and even your ideas. Who do you think? You think I got something wrong or missed something? Let me know in the comments. I love reading all your guys' comments, especially for videos like this. I love... I just love talking about hockey. I love this game. Are you guys fucking stoked, man? Playoff hockey. It's felt like forever, but we're back. And we're back. And I don't even care if my team gets swept in the first round. I am just so excited to watch playoff hockey. And I think you guys are excited as well. So let the comments and the likes fly. Gotta gotta feed me those likes. Not really. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you can dislike it. Um, but yeah. Mostly, I want to hear all of your guys' feedback, man. So what do you think? All these matchups, and um, after the first round is settled, we'll be back here to talk about the second round matchups, and uh, we'll see how how many hot takes I had and how much I got wrong, because it's bound to happen. But what if I'm perfect, though? What if everything I said was right? <gasps> it's going to be crazy. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this, and um, let's get these playoffs underway.